what just arrived in the mail. This is gonna be a fun one. This is the Argus Sport made by Mongoose. And we think it may just be your new favorite fat tire bike. Great news is you can get fat tire mongoose bikes on Amazon. In fact, we'll put some links in the description box below. Now, this does require a little bit of assembly, but it's actually super easy. In today's video, we're gonna walk through the process using only a couple of small tools that you probably already have. So inside the box, you can see how this thing comes packed. All the pieces are really nicely wrapped to protect the frame. You can see these huge tires are already semi-inflated. Now this is not necessary, but as you can see, we are using a bike stand today just to make the process a touch easier. Now don't forget to take off the little plastic cover that protects your quick release on the back wheel. Now one of the first things I'm gonna do since I have it up in the bike stand is I'm gonna get this seat nice and level with the frame. You can see it's kind of angled down like this straight out of the box. It's really easy to adjust. And so that's where we're gonna pick up our first tools we're gonna need for this job. And that's this set of Allen keys. Now these are metric, this is a five millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these two little bolts that are down here and you can move them back and forth to get this seat nice and level. Okay, with our handlebars unwrapped, we're now ready to mount them up here on our stem. We can use this little guide to make sure we're at the correct angle, again, for our preference level. So to loosen these bolts on the head stem, we're gonna need a three mil Allen key. Once you have these loose ends, you can just pull this whole bracket up and out. Okay, now what we wanna do is take our bars, and basically just bring them up. Again, make sure to take note of where your cables are. You don't want those to get wrapped around your head stem here. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bars with this little line indicator straight up front. Then I'm gonna take my front bracket with those bolts. Again, be careful not to lose them. I'm gonna put that into place. What I'm then gonna do is take that three mil Allen key again, and I'm just gonna go in an X pattern like this, and I'm just gonna barely tighten this down. I don't want to crank on it yet because I want to give this a micro adjustment to make sure it's perfectly centered before we get everything tight. Now for these aluminum bars, you don't need to worry so much for torque. Again, just make sure they're really nice and tight and snug. Now, while we're here working on the bars, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these grips. You can see that the little hand portion where you kind of rest your palm on, that's sticking up at a funny angle straight out of the box. Now these are not lock on grips, so you can just really kind of wrench on them and get your hand over and you can actually move those until that little palm rest piece is almost parallel with the bike. You do want it angled up just a touch. Now this is also a perfect time to adjust our brake levers and our shifting levers. So we're just gonna loosen it up, this bolt right here and this bolt right here. Again, this is the shifter and this one is for your brake lever. You have another brake lever over on this side. We're gonna need that five mil Allen key again. We're gonna loosen this up. And again, that'll allow us to kind of adjust these so where they feel natural and correct for where we're holding our grips. Now for us, the correct comfort angle is gonna be something like this. Again, we're gonna have to wait till we get out and ride this bike just a bit to again, feel exactly where these should be. But again, that's how you loosen and tighten it. On this side, your shifting lever is gonna be a three millimeter bolt, whereas the brake lever will be a five millimeter. Now again, there are torque specs for this if you're using carbon bars. For us and these aluminum bars, we're just gonna make sure we use our keys and get them down nice and snug. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure the bars and the forks down here are nice and aligned and straight. Now all of the tightening and loosening of these bolts to adjust are gonna happen up here on the stem. What I like to do is use this mongoose emblem and make sure that little arrow piece is sticking straight down on the middle of the fork and again, that the top is aligned with our bars. Once everything looks good, we can take our three millimeter Allen key and we're gonna tighten down on the bolt up here. We'll then take that same three mil Allen key and we'll tighten down these two bolts that connect this stem to the top of our fork up here. Now, again, if you wanna do this perfectly with a torque wrench, you can see that you do need to tighten it down between five and six Newton meters. Now, one of the other adjustments you can make in the future is these specific head spacers. 
as you can see, there's three that are on the bottom here. These can be adjusted and moved actually up to the top if you'd like these bars to sit lower, maybe closer to the frame. Now, one of the nice things about this bike that comes stock are these little cable management clips. So we can actually get these cables nice and clipped together so that we have a better, more clean look with our cable management. Okay, it's time to mount our front wheel. So let's go ahead and take off these little protectors. There's one on this side. Now on the flip side, there's another little cover piece. We're gonna need to grab our little axle skewer to get that one out. So let's grab it here in our box and we'll take off that end. That just unscrews. Again, make sure you don't lose these little spring bits. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in from this side with our skewer through that axle. And then we're just gonna push on that end and that little cap will pop right off. Okay, now the way we're gonna load this skewer through our axle of our front wheel is just like this. We're gonna have one spring on either end and then this cap is gonna be on the left-hand side of the tire. So it'll be mounted just like this. And we're just gonna put our cap on loosely. Okay, on the front fork down at the bottom, we can see our little disc brake caliper. And basically what we're looking for is this little plastic shield there. We need to remove that so our rotor can seat up into our brake pads. Okay, it's time to mount the front tire. What we're gonna do is just gonna roll it into place. Okay, and as we bring the tire up into place, again, you're gonna look first for the rotor to seat up in between the two brake pads. And then you're gonna look down here to make sure the skewer clicks into place onto the front of the fork. There's that little hook. We're then ready to tighten this down and that'll get it dialed in so you can just push up on your quick release and get that nice and snug into place. Okay, it's time to get the pedals on. Now these are nice because they're labeled correctly in the way that you need to spin and tighten. Now you can see these are also nicely labeled so you don't get mixed up. Let's start with our left one and get it on. Now one of the things that can really help with the tightening process is a pedal wrench. You can find these wrenches on Amazon. We'll put some links in the description box below if you need these. They just kind of help get into tight spots. If you've got a 15 millimeter regular wrench, that'll work just fine as well. So using our fingers first, I'm gonna put the left pedal into the left crank and we're gonna go ahead and twist counterclockwise to get this into place. Again, you can do most of this with your fingers to tighten it down first and then get in there with the wrench. Now, once we're done with the left side, we can repeat the process with the right. Just remember, you're gonna go in the opposite direction with the right pedal. Okay, at this point, if you're like me, you're getting super stoked to get this thing out for a trial ride. A couple of things we need to do before we jump on it. Let's go ahead and go around. We're gonna check a lot of our other little bolts. Now, all these should be tight when they come from the manufacturer, but again, you wanna just go through, give everything a quick touch with your Allen wrenches and make sure everything's nice and tight. You don't want any of these things coming loose on you during your first ride. Okay, the last thing we wanna do is check the tire pressure. Now these come pretty well aired up directly from the factory, but again, I'm gonna adjust for the altitude here in Colorado. We usually run about 10 or 11 PSI, which is very low compared to traditional mountain bikes. But again, there's so much tire width that you don't need to pump these up to a super high pressure in order for them to work really great. Now today I'm using this little Ryobi power inflator. It just gives me a really great digital gauge. It also allows me to get a lot of air in with just that trigger instead of using a bike pump. Again, with these really high volume tires. These tires actually come with Presta valves. And so what we'll need to do is get a little Presta valve adapter and I'm gonna thread that onto the back press the valve here with it in the open position. And then we'll go ahead and use our power inflator to get some air into the tires. And there she is, friends, all put together and ready to rip. Let's go ahead and get this beast out on our local trails. This thing is awesome. We think you're gonna love it too. Remember there are Amazon links in the description box below. Thanks for watching friends.